Good morning. It's good to be with everyone this morning. My wife came up to me a couple weeks ago and she said, uh, Babe, she calls me Babe. There you go. You know my nickname now. She said, Babe, I'm going to pray three Ps over your life. And immediately I thought, Uh oh, (laughs) what are the three Ps? And immediately I started thinking, What could they be? What could they be? And then she shared them with me. She said, First, I'm going to pray patience over your life. Secondly, I'm going to pray peace over your life. And thirdly, I'm going to pray perspective over your life. And you know, in the last couple weeks, it's been amazing to see how those prayers have taken effect in my life. And the truth is, I want everybody to look up at me. The truth is, my wife, she wasn't just praying so that I could get through my day. My, my wife came to me and she claimed prayers that were battle prayers over my life. Somebody say amen to that one. She came to me and she said, I recognize that you're in the middle of it. There's things surrounding you. There's troubles. There's trials. It just seems like there's always something. Because when you're in ministry, when you're leading the way, there's always something. And it's good and it's worth it. But I'm going to pray peace and I'm going to pray patience and I'm going to pray perspective over your life. The same is true over everybody in this room this morning. We have things going on. We have loved ones in the hospital. We have troubles at work. We have quarrels at home. We have trials with our grandchildren. We have issues in our finances. The truth is, we all need prayer. And I've got some news for you. In the same way that my wife prayed three Ps over me, I'm going to pray three Ps over you. Are you ready? (laughs) Some of you are going, what are the three Ps? Well, I'm glad you asked. I want you to get your fight cards out. If you don't know what a fight card is, I want you to pull out the card. It's the worship card you got on the way in. I don't have a copy of it, but someone hold it up. I think we, we have it on their screens. If you don't have a fight card, I want you to raise your hand, and an usher is going to come around, and they're going to give you a fight card. Why are we doing these fight cards? There's one over here. If you're an usher. We've got, one, we've got them all over, so thank you, ushers. I'm going to give you three Ps, and I want you to turn your fight card over, and uh, those that are getting it, you'll be able to catch up. I won't go too fast. I'm going to give you three Ps. You ready? Here we go. The first P is perspective. And I need to go like this because I'm left-handed. We've got another lefty in the room. Perspective. It's hard to spell in front of people. Did I get it right? It's a little crooked. The first P is perspective. I want you all to write it down. Everybody in this room, write it down. Balcony, wherever you're at. If you're joining us online, jot it on your notes on your phone. The first P is perspective. The second P is position. I want everyone to write this on your fight card. Perspective, then position, and then thirdly, purpose. Purpose. Now I want you guys to say that with me. Say these three words together. Ready? Perspective, position, purpose. Now keep those cards in front of you because we're going to unpack these letters as we go. Before we go into the message, though, I want to give everybody in the room a fair warning. I want to give you an advisory notice. And here it is. If your main goal is a comfortable life, If your main goal is a comfortable faith journey, where everything about your faith journey is what you can get out of it, then this message is not for you. I'm glad you're here, but this message isn't for you. Listen to this. If your faith walk is defined on what happens on Sunday morning, what happens in this hour for a couple of hours maybe on Sunday, I just want to say this message is not for you. I'm glad you're here, but this message isn't for you. But if you see your faith, if you're a Jesus follower and you're in this place and you see your faith as something more than just what happens on Sunday morning, and you're not just playing church, you're not just looking good for everybody around you, wearing all your good clothes and all that stuff, smelling good. If you're in this place and your faith takes you out of this place and changes how you live, then this message is for you. If you're ready for your life to be a little disrupted this morning, get a little uncomfortable, get outside of what is normal, 
In fact, I want to coin a new phrase. If you're ready to rock the normal, this is a message for you. Amen? Say rock the normal. Look at your neighbor and say rock the normal. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to unpack these (laughs) three Ps together. We're going to look at why these words lead us to fighting prayers. Because as your pastor, I want you to go from this place and I want you to know how to fight back when battles come your way. When you're surrounded by trouble, surrounded by trials, surrounded by persecution, whatever it may be, I want you to know how to fight back. So we're going to look at these words. We're going to practice praying these words together. And to set this up, we're going to look at a famous passage that Jesus was giving to his disciples. Some call it the disciples' prayer. It's in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. We're going to look at that together. We're going to we're going to walk through it together. And to set it up a little bit, I just want to say that Jesus was giving this to his disciples not as a way of saying, hey, if you want to just, you know, follow Jesus and everything goes great and it just, it's all easy and it's all comfortable and you can just, woo, it's going to be good. Here's the prayer. Actually, I don't think that's, that's true at all. I think Jesus was saying, I'm going to give you a prayer because as you follow me and as you give your life for me and for the purposes of the gospel, you're going to be persecuted, you're going to be, you're going to be crucified, some of them, you're going to be pushed back against, you're going to be ridiculed, you're going to be oppressed, people are going to hate you, people are going to talk about you, people are going to push you back when you try to push my work forward. This is a fighting prayer. Some call it the disciples' prayers. I've mentioned, I'm calling it a fighting prayer this morning. Jesus said, if you want to step into something that has greater purpose and you want to fight back, here are the words. Here's how you pray fighting prayers. I want you to look at it with me. Verse 9, we're going to read it together. I'll read it to you. We'll have the words on your screen. It says this. Jesus said to his disciples, his 12 men, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven... Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You see what Jesus was teaching his disciples and what he's going to teach us this morning is this first P perspective. He wanted them to capture this because he knew the battle ahead of them. You see, friends, we fight our battles when we understand in prayer, when we understand perspective. My wife taught me this a while back, and I'm going to teach it to you. Oftentimes in life, we we get surrounded by all these issues, right? And I'm going to draw a picture of you guys. You're you're like, you're really good-looking people, so forgive me in advance, right? This is you. Aren't you a good-looking group of people? Someone almost clapped. (laughs) And notice, I want you to notice, notice this right here. Because see, the truth is, in life, things come up. Issues with finances come up. Issues with school comes up. Issues with all kinds of things come up. I mean, just there, and and I'll just kind of do this. Like, we just get surrounded with problems, surrounded with issues. And and, and you know, what happens is we get so consumed with the problems of life, we get so consumed with all the things that are happening to us, all the things that are coming at us, that we literally, I mean, it's kind of like this. We just get consumed in this circle of life. And what my wife has taught me and what we're trying to teach to our kids and, and, and what we're learning ourselves is one of the keys to seeing what's going on and getting a fresh perspective and understanding a little more clearly what might be going on, you have to step outside of it. So my wife's comment, I'm going to teach you. She says, draw a circle around it and step outside of it. I haven't left much room for the next stick man, but you'll get the point. Now I want you to see this smiley face. You see that? Because when we're outside of it, when we're outside looking in, at all of our issues, maybe addictions, maybe problems with, uh, it may be a, a niece or a nephew or a grandchild or a grandparent, whatever it is, we get a healthier perspective. 
we see things differently. What I want to teach you is how in, in, when we fight back, when we have the, the willingness to step into spiritual warfare, we have to s- draw a circle around it, step outside of it, and look at it. And that's what Jesus is teaching us in this passage. Jesus is saying, I want you as disciples to have a perspective, to see the bigger picture, to not get trapped in your, your like, orb of life, like it's all about you. And in fact, uh, the world, it's, it's me, it's consumerism, it's all about us, it's, it's our problems, our issues. And we get so consumed with it, we get t- taken out of significance in God's kingdom. God, let me speak this to all of us this morning, God wants to break into your little kingdom. This is your kingdom my life, my issues, my stuff, my bank account, my car, my stuff, whatever. This is your kingdom. God wants to break into it. How do we let him break into it? We step outside of it and see it with his eyes. We pray, God, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Listen, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, God, break into my orb, break into my cyclone of life. I'm trapped. A great way to illustrate this is with those incredible little drones that start at ground level. And in just seconds, you instantly see a bigger picture. You see that what is surrounding you is far greater, far bigger, far more critical than the little circle of frustration that you can't get out of. I want you to watch this video. This is me at the entrance. Everybody wave to me. Okay. Now watch this. This, is, this, this drone, thanks to Steve Armstrong, is going up about 200 feet. It's pulling back. It's going over the intersection of Lower Huntington Road and Airport Expressway. Now look at the distance. Now, now just keep watching. Look at the homes. Look at the neighborhoods. Look at downtown Fort Wayne in the distance. And it's going to go faster. Look at all these neighborhoods, these families, these lives, these parks, this green, greenscape. Look at everything around us. Look at the perspective. See, the truth is, we get caught, listen, we get caught in our orb of life, and we get trapped there. And I'm going to just say this, I'm going to be bold, Satan, the deceiver, the devil, he wants you to stay right inside here. He doesn't want you to break out of it. He doesn't want you to see the bigger picture. He doesn't want you to have the perspective to know that something bigger is going on. There's something more, there's something out there besides my problems. Here's the truth. If the enemy can keep your eyes on the little circle, he will keep you from having a heavenly kingdom perspective. I find it interesting that the antonym of perspective or the opposite of the word perspective, this is fascinating. You know what it is? Anybody know what the opposite of perspective is? This is, fa- this is great. Hopeless. Hopeless. So where does the enemy want you? Where does the deceiver want you? Where does Satan want you? He wants you hopeless. He wants you trapped in your orb of life, thinking that just everything is going wrong and just things couldn't get worse. He wants you to stay there because in there, in this place is hopelessness. And see, Jesus is teaching his disciples and he's teaching us, step outside of the circle and view it with God's eyes. See with his perspective, there's something bigger. God wants to use you for something bigger. The first P is perspective. Jesus said, here's how you pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come in here. Your will be done in here. God, have your will in my life. Have your will in my problems. Have your will in my issues. Jesus says, on earth as it is in heaven. On earth, that's in this. Jesus, have your way. God, have your way in my life as it is in heaven. That's perspective. So I just want to practice with you. Here's my prayer for perspective this week. If you're willing to take this message seriously, and if you want to be in the battle, if you want to join the spiritual warfare that's around you, and you want to move from hopelessness to perspective, you might pray something like this. This is just my prayer. You may come up with words of your own. I I just put this, God, you're awesome. You made everything. Help me step outside of my little circle of hopelessness. Help me to see that your kingdom is greater than my kingdom. This isn't about my kingdom, it's about his. Help me see it, God. 
Bring your kingdom into my house. Bring your kingdom into General Motors. Bring your kingdom into Steel Dynamics. Bring your kingdom into my office space. Bring your kingdom into my nursing job. Bring your kingdom into my relationship with my grandchildren. Bring your kingdom into my marriage. Somebody say amen. The first P is perspective. If you want to move from hopelessness and being caught in just this this vicious cycle of of you and and meism and consumerism, break out of it. Get some perspective in your life. I need to get perspective in my life. Draw a circle around it. Step outside of it and ask God, God, help me see with your eyes. That's the first P. The second P, what is it? Good job. You said that with great confidence. The second P is position. Look at your fight card. First P, perspective. Second P, position. Now, this is powerful. Did you know that the antonym of position, the opposite of position, is nowhere? I I, I just find this so powerful. When we look at these three Ps and we look at the opposite, the opposite of position is nowhere. So if you want to fight back, if you want to join the battle, if you want to be in spiritual warfare and follow Christ and do great work in this world, know your position. Jesus shows us how to have our position, just like this, verse 11. I want you to look at these words. Maybe you've never looked at it this way. Jesus says, give us today our daily bread. In other words, wherever you are today, wherever you are in your workplace, in your marriage, in your neighborhood, in, in your relationships with, with, with friends, wherever you are, it's praying, God, help me see that today you can break into today with your daily bread. Maybe some of you remember our fighting word from last week, the fighting words from last week. It is written. Jesus gave us these fighting words. Responding to temptation with truth, Jesus says, it is written. Man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Father. Those are fighting words. In other words, today, no matter where you are at, every person in this room, no matter where you are at, what you are going through, what battle you are facing, here's the fighting prayer. God, give me the words I need to fight back. Words of truth, words of hope. Here's my practice prayer. Maybe you'll have a prayer similar. I said this this week as I was preparing for this message. God, I can't stand my job. Just kidding, I'm not, not my job. Hypothetical, right? God, I can't stand my job. Get honest with God. God, I can't stand my coworkers. God, I recognize that today's a gift, so I'm going to choose to be where my feet are and accept that you can use the position I'm in for something greater. Some of you are going, I hate the house I live in. Some of you are going, I hate the neighborhood I live in. I hate my job. Some of you, if you're going to get real honest, you're struggling with your marriage. You're struggling with relationships. And this fighting prayer is to say, I'm going to be where my feet are. I love this, this idea, right? God, help me to be where my feet are today in my marriage, where my feet are today in this situation with losing a loved one. God, help me to be where my feet are. Help me to own the position that you've given me in life. I'm going to choose to be where you've placed me. Now, I have some, I want to brag on something. I met Jeff Corwin this uh, couple weeks ago. Does anybody know who Jeff Corwin is? One person? That's awesome. He's he's a celebrity with with, uh, Animal Planet, if you don't know who he is. Now, I was downtown Starbucks studying um, for my Easter message. And I was, I was writing, and I see this guy come in, and, and I'm like, man, I think that's Jeff Corwin from Animal Planet. And I'm like, no, it can't be Jeff. Why would Jeff Corwin, he reaches millions of people all over the world through Animal Planet. Why would he be in Fort Wayne, right? So I'm like, it can't be him. And then he talks, and I'm like, that is Jeff Corwin. I knew his voice. And he, and he orders his coffee, and he's an environmentalist, so he orders his coffee with no plastic lid. I'm like, okay, this is definitely the guy. And he's waiting for his coffee at the end of the counter, and, and, and I don't know what got into me. I'm usually not, I, I don't get worked up about it, but today I was really excited about Jeff Corwin. And he's, he's ordered his coffee, and, and uh, he's waiting at the end of the counter, so I kind of scoot over, right? I'm, like, I'm sitting on the counter, I'm like, boop, 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 boop. Hey, Jeff, what brings you to Fort Wayne? And he goes, well, I'm speaking at the local university. 
And immediately, I hadn't planned this. I, it wasn't scripted. Not, I just, out of nowhere, I said, Jeff Corwin, thank you for what you do to help our planet and for making Mother Earth a better place, just like that. And I think he's like, whoa, this guy had way too much espresso or something, <laughs> right? Like, now, why am I sharing this story? It's not to make me look good, but I want to give you a fighting prayer that's in my life, and I want to just give you an example of what it might look like in your life. You see, the truth is, every day I wake up and I, I, um, I pray, God, whoever comes along my path today, I want to encourage them. I don't care if it's the trash guy. I mean, if it's the guy picking up my trash, I don't care if it's the person making my coffee. I don't care if it's the person cleaning, cleaning the streets. I don't care who it is, the construction worker, whatever it is. God, help me to encourage that person. And I try to live with that fighting prayer. God, I want to be where my feet are so I can encourage the people that you bring along my path. And I just think it's funny that God brought Jeff Corwin along my path. <laughs> of course God can bring Jeff Corwin along K. Paul's path. And of course I can encourage a guy that reaches millions of people every week. The truth is, I just wonder if, if you all would be where your feet are and you'd pray fighting prayers of purpose, fighting prayers, knowing that your position, God has you in your workplace, in your marriage, in your household. He has you there for a reason. If you were to fully accept your position, what God could do with your life. Jesus takes this even deeper. He says in verses 12 and 13, I want you to look at these words. He says, give us today our daily bread. In other words, be where your feet are. God's going to do something in your position today. Verse 12, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Verse 13, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now, I think Jesus takes it to another step, and here's why. You see, I think Jesus is saying, yes, be where your feet are, but also live a life if you want to live a life that's changing the world, live in your position of forgiven. You can write that, just write it down or something, because here's the thing. In this prayer, forgiveness is woven throughout. And you see, I think in spiritual warfare, I think the enemy, here's what the enemy wants to do. I hope you all are looking at this. The enemy wants to say, you messed up in your marriage, you messed up in your finances, you haven't done a good job in work, you, you, you said a, you know, a bad word, you yelled at your kids. You messed up on your health insurance, and, and he just wants you to live in this world, and he wants you to live with shame, and he wants you to live with guilt, and he wants you to just walk around like, I'm a failure, and I'm, I've made mistakes, and I'm no good, and, and, and the enemy's like, yes, keep him in that place. But Jesus wants to say, you are forgiven, and what I did for you on the cross means that you're forgiven today, you're forgiven yesterday, and you're forgiven tomorrow, right? So if you want to live where your feet are, Stop letting the enemy remind you of your mistakes, remind you of your, your past issues or whatever that has happened in your life that you've now started believing that that's who you are. The truth is you are who Christ says you are. And if you accept what he did for you on the cross, you are a forgiven, loved child of God who can live with freedom. And that's what this is about. The enemy, Satan, his name is the devil. He wants you to stay right here in shame and guilt. He wants you to think that you're just a hot mess and he can't use you for anything. In fact, he wants, here's an even, even bigger lie. He wants you to think that he, God won't use you until you get your stuff together. There's many of us in this room that we're just, well, I'll serve at the church when I get my marriage together. I'll serve at the church when I get it figured out with my, you know, with the issue I have with, with drugs or with alcohol. And the truth is, God wants to use you right now. Yes, he wants you to heal. Yes, he wants you to recover. But God wants to use you today. But the enemy wants to keep you in your shame. So Jesus is saying, disciples, if you want to join this battle, live with the forgiveness that I will give you when I die for you on the cross. And I believe verse 13 is a wonderful result of living with the freedom of forgiveness. Because I think if we're living with forgiveness and we live with joy and we live with the freedom of the cross, then the devil isn't going to use our shame and our guilt to lead us down paths of temptation that leads to sin and destruction. I think if we live with the freedom of forgiveness, our eyes are on Christ. We have the perspective and we have our position and we're living with freedom and God's using us to change the world. So pray with perspective, and in so doing, you will then understand your position, 
and how God wants to use you right where you are, right where your feet are. And this then, here it is, listen, leads to the third P. What's the third P? Purpose, purpose you got it. You want to know, do you know what the antonym of purpose is? Accident. The opposite of purpose is accident. You see, the enemy, he wants you to think that your life is just accident after accident after accident after accident. But the truth is, Jesus is teaching the disciples and he's teaching us that there's a purpose for your life. Many people come to me and they say, what's God's purpose for my life? What's God's will for my life? And it's answered, I think, in, in many places in the Bible. But I want to point to one place, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. Look at these words. Maybe you're wondering what your purpose is. Maybe you're wondering what God's will is. Look at this. God's will, it says this, Paul the Apostle says, Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Let me break this down really quick. In other words, if you live with the freedom of the cross, the forgiveness that is offered to you through the cross, you're going to have joy always. You're going to have perspective. You're going to be where your feet are. And in that position, you can pray, and you can pray continually, pray for perspective, pray that God will give you the daily bread. And no matter what your circumstances, in your marriage, in your life, in your problems, no matter what those things are, give him thanks. It says, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Who wants to follow Jesus? This is it. That's God's will for you. Every one of you in this room, every single person, balcony, floor, video that's his will for your life listen first of all everyone in this room i want you to hear something from me none of you in this place are an accident none of you in this place were an accident some of us here today are feeling hopeless we're feeling very much like this sad stick figure we're caught in the middle of nowhere and like life is just one big accident after accident after accident and after, after accident. But I'm going to speak some truth over you today. I hope you hear it. God sees you and wants his kingdom to break into your life today. God wants his kingdom to break into your kingdom. Right now, right here in this place. Secondly, God has you where you are for a reason. Wherever you are, your position matters. Your position at the grocery store matters. Your position as a mom matters. Your position as a daddy matters. Your position in your family, wherever, whatever it is, matters. Your position in the classroom, sports team, quiz team, youth group, insurance team, volunteer team, you name it, it matters. Last weekend, believe it or not, we had one of our largest non-holiday weekends we've had in three years here at Avalon Church. And one of my favorite stories from the weekend was how one of our greeters in the children's wing, they, they, this is so cool, they were greeting people with such passion and such energy that the, this story came back to me that these families were just coming in and this person was greeting. They were going, welcome to our church. We're so glad you're here. And, and I don't even know who this person was, but the families were like, wow, there's energy. There's life in this place. These people are doing something. These people are excited about something. I want to be a part of that. And I just thought, that's it. Whether you're a greeter, whether you're in the children's wing, whether you're on the worship team, whether you're up front teaching, whatever it may be, I just want to say to you, friends, Christians, Jesus followers, own it. I'm getting so sweaty, my glasses are falling off my face. Because I'm owning it. Because I'm, I'm not here to play church. I'm here because there's a battle and there's an enemy who wants to take your life down. He wants you to have no perspective. He wants you to think you're an accident. He wants you to be hopeless. And he wants you to have no purpose. And I'm here to tell you that you have a purpose. You are no accident. And God wants to use you to change the world for something bigger than yourself. Somebody say amen to that. That's what this is about. That's what this is about. So wherever you are, own it. Own it in your marriage. Own it in your workplace. Own it in your church. Own it at the door. Own it in the tech booth. Own it wherever you are. And God will use you in a mighty way. This is it. This is how we fight our battles, y'all. Here it is. Fighting prayers coming from faithful warriors of Christ. People that aren't here just to play church. So I'm going to give you a charge this morning. I'm going to give you a charge to join the battle. 
And when the storms of life come your way, worship in the middle of the storm. That's how we fight our battles. Join the battle. And when you're surrounded by trouble, choose truth. Respond to temptation with truth and experience victory. I'm going to charge us this morning to join the battle with fighting prayers of a heavenly perspective. Remembering your position and that God has a great purpose for your life. Own it. Say it with me. Own it. Own it. Perspective, position, purpose. Let's pray.